relationship with the late former President Daniel Arab Moy, from his role as a key organizer in YK92 to his support for Project Uhuru in 2002. And thereafter, the deputy president shares key moments that define their political father-son relationship in this interview with Wahiga Maura. Your Excellency, thank you so much for speaking to us today at your residence. Thank you, my friend. Even as the nation continues to reflect on the legacy of the late Daniel Turetit Arab Moy, we want to first give you a chance to pay tribute to him and to send uh, your condolence message to his family. I have done this before, uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, but let me again, on my own behalf, on behalf of my family and many friends who say Daniel Turetit Arab Moy was... Um, our father figure to say how sad it is that we have lost him a man who made a huge contribution to what kenya is today mm -hmm. and more specifically to the people and the leaders that we are today so my very deep and sincere condolences to Mze Daniel Toroji Jaramoy, our second president of the Republic of Kenya, uh, a man who I knew at a very personal level, mm -hmm. and a man who contributed immensely to what Kenya is today. I'm curious to hear from you. You've talked about who he was for the country, mm -hmm. but what did he mean to you? Daniel Moy was uh, later to become uh, my mentor politically, because when I joined uh, politics. Um, I joined politics as a Kanu member then. Moy was the chairman of Kanu and was president of Kenya. And even in our university days, he, we interacted with him a lot as uh, student leaders from different districts of Kenya. And therefore, he was many things. Allow me to invite you to take a seat, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you've given us a bit of history of where you and Moi first, uh, in a sense, crossed paths. But for many Kenyans, they identify your sort of political career and, of course, the, pres uh, the president's journey with YK92. Um, talk to us a little bit about the origins of, of YK92 and what Moi hoped it would become. Uh, some youth uh, galvanized themselves into this youth for Kano 92, when the elections uh, were around the corner. Mm -hmm. And so we became of that part of that movement. Then I was a first year master student at the University of Nairobi. And in fact, because of joining the youth for Kano, uh, my graduation as a, as a student of uh, Nairobi University master's degree was delayed by almost 10 years because I joined the youth for Kano and uh, my uh, academics were put on hold. Yeah, and that is how now we became part of this movement to support uh, Kano at that time, to support Do President Moy. What role you were playing in particular? Then I was the executive officer of Youth for Kano. Mm -hmm. I used to have an office at the KICC. And uh, I used to see people from youth from different parts of Kenya, from as early as uh, seven in the morning, and we used to live there at 10 p.m. And of course, we had the big boys, you know, the Jirongos, uh, the Munwa Waiyakis, uh, the Sam Nyamweas, and all the other big boys in, uh, in Youth for Kano. I remember June Moi was part of that, uh, part of that crowd. There have been questions about the people who worked for Moy, who interacted with him on the political front and even in government, you included, and probably how they made their wealth. How would you say your interaction with Moy was in relation to your business dealings, in relation to how you created your wealth? Moy was a very generous person, first. He really went out of his way and Maybe even some of the traits some of us have of giving, we may have learned from him. Uh, or he may have influenced us in some way. Uh, I remember um, uh, my first 
interaction with Moi when it comes to what you've just said. A, a, a few of us, university students, we went to see him at one point. And we asked him to give us a piece of land in Eldred. And he actually did. What for? And we sold the piece of land. And with that piece of land, I remember I bought, uh, I bought my first car. Was it his personal? Pro it was his personal property that he gave you. No, it was not. It was the, there were pieces of land that were being given for development mm -hmm. in Eldred Town. Mm -hmm. So, as university students, four of us went, and he gave us one plot. Because we asked him, say, please help us. So he said, okay. He asked somebody, please uh, help these young people. I know the times have changed, but many would question whether those were procedural ways of, of assisting people to do I business. Think, I think they were procedural ways. I, I do not think that Moi went out of his way to do something good. Mm -hmm. And even if maybe people later went and did things the wrong way, that was not Moi's uh, thinking. Moi just wanted to help, and he wanted to help people within the law. After 1997, and by then we can assume you were quite an insider in Kanu, you begin to hear of talk of a merger between Kanu and NDP, some sort of partnership. What was going, what was going on on the inside? The, the Kanu big wigs were uncomfortable with the merger, right? Because uh, at that point, uh, there was an axis called Kabisa axis. This Kabisa axis was uh, made of uh, uh, Kamodo, Biwot, and Saitoti. That was the Kabisa axis. They were uncomfortable with the merger. And then there was now the younger politicians like myself, uh, Sunkuli, and others who could reach Moi. So we, so, so the merger was a complication because not many people, especially the older people in Kano, did not trust uh, Raila Odinga. And therefore they had reservations as to what is the real benefit of bringing uh, Raila into, the, into this arrangement. Uh, there was these expanded positions. We had now four, four vice chairs. Mm -hmm. Raila became a secretary general. And of course, in the process, uh, Saitoti and Kamoto lost their positions. So it, it wasn't quite an interesting uh, scenario, right? So uh, therein developed uh, a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. In, 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 in Kano. I remember one evening going to Moi's uh, Cabernet residence because there was too much confusion. Nobody knew exactly what it was. So I remember asking the former president, um, Zay, have you settled on Huru Kenyatta as your preferred candidate or, or there is still a, 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 a room for a discussion? He told me, I have decided. So we went, picked our uh, bags, and went to campaign. But uh, our confidence was we had Moi on our side. Mm. But we tried to persuade Moi to let Uhuru run an independent campaign, not necessarily chaperoned by him. Yeah? Because, you know, it was hurting him because of this project tag that, uh, of course, many people spread rumors, you know, Uru cannot stand on his own. He is just another, you know, Moi is trying to put in place somebody who he can control. And all this came. And uh, the way in which uh, we managed the election did not help matters. I want to fast forward then because those who read their history know what happened after that to the point when there's a realization that the race is lost and the move to then concede, what steps preceded that, that move? That was a very interesting place. So uh, the first signals we saw that things are really thick 
is uh, when Kibaki got an accident and he was in London and Moi had gone to some trip somewhere and then he passes by London to see Kibaki yeah that sent chills you know was this public yes it was public it was public so we realized that Moi was actually ready to hand over because there was a belief that Moi could not hand over yeah so but when he went to visit Kibaki I think they, it dawned on people, including us, all of us, that Moi was ready to hand over. And of course, Moi made that statement at some point and said, uh, him, he's ready to hand over to whoever wins. <laughs> so this myth we always had that in any case, it is Moi to hand over to somebody just evaporated, you know. So on this, so we went, we voted, and then uh, we, we we came to State House to see this, uh, to to wait for the results. So we were there, many. Uh, Be what I don't know who, many many people, Kanu people. There we were many from across, Kamodo, all these people. So we are in. Uh, no, no, Kamodo had left. You know, others, there were many people here. So, there is a TV there. And the results are streaming. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are, uh, the gap is widening. So I remember Musa Sirma and other people who are sitting here, they were beginning to ask, uh, these results, is Moy aware? that these results are coming in this way. And at what point is he going to do something about it? Because somehow people believed... What did he want me to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> somehow people believed that Nyaya could do something, some miracle, so that the results could change. So we are waiting, the results are, the, gaps are, the gap is widening. And we were sitting in, uh, in, 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 in one of the rooms there, the big room in State House, there were so many chairs. And the 40 people started to become 30. Yeah. Uh, and then shortly, Moi opens the door. You know, and he, with a lot of force, the door opened. So we stood up. And then he asks me, looks at me and says, William, where is Uhuru? I tell him, I think Uhuru is at home. So he says, uh, call him and prepare the concession speech. He asked you to prepare the concession. Me and Uhuru now to prepare the concession speech. Man, that room, <laughs> that room became dark for a while. I mean, people could not believe that Moi had said, let us go and prepare the concession speech. So I went to the comptroller's office. I telephoned uh, uh, President Uhuru. He was then uh, our candidate. He was at home. I told him the president wants to see you. And uh, he has asked me that we prepare the concession speech. Okay, so we prepare the concession speech. And uh, along the way, uh, the press is booked. Where are we going to issue this concession speech? We said, maybe we go to KICC, maybe we go, but then we said, okay, Serena. So the 30 people became, the, the 40 became 30, 30 became 20. 20 became 10. By the time we were getting to the cars, there were very few people left. I think we ended up in Serena with maybe two, three members of parliament and others. The other people took their cars and disappeared. and disappeared. 
that was quite a moment in uh, in the history of the whole of this uh, story but then um, the other interesting bit is uh, now we have uh, we've considered defeat now the former opposition now government are saying the handover must be immediate mm. they wanted the handover immediately because there was always this perception that moi would not hand over mm. you know so there was pressure or there about so it was it was hurried so uh, on the day of the handover so we come the moi boys you know we were there we want to escort uh, president moi to go and hand over the field is full in uh, in uh, what in uh, horu park there are placards in horu park people are placards there wanted alive or dead william ruto nicolas biwot i don't know who <laughs> so we are watching the people there are so energized against anything to do with moi so while we are preparing to go to so the commandant of the presidential red court comes and says now things are very thick at uhuru park we do not have enough men to protect all of you guys we only have enough men to protect the president to go and hand over the rest of you take your cars and go away where were you by then we were in state house you were in state house yeah we wanted we wanted to go now to down to the president the escorting so the uh, escorting the president to go on and hand over was never to be so we we took our cars took the back uh, um and exit. entry exit mm -hmm. and left then we went to watch the story from home and of course you know that that, that ceremony was quite you know uh, chaotic if you wish to say i think the army could not even perform it was it was quite a drama dramatic but still uh, moi went there and handed over uh, i remember i remember uh, on that particular day uh, while we are still there at state house jokindungu and other people arrive mm -hmm. arrive in state house and they say oh we want the keys to this uh, the building <laughs> to this place so, so we are looking now hey this thing is really moving eh so anyway but uh, it, happened. It, it happened and uh, moi handed over uh, peacefully um kibaki i must admit was gracious to him uh, he was escorted out of uh, state house uh, everybody knows what happened and then uh, he went back home to Kabarak and went into and retirement. I want to take you to because when you look at Moy after retirement many things have been said about how he spent his time but a lot has also been said about how his relationship and yours seemingly broke down. Is there a time when you can say that things you were know, never the same uh, after <clears> that? <throat> uh, it is true to an extent that uh, of course when um we got out of uh, when he got out of office and we went into the opposition there was a lot of you know uh, witch hunt you know i remember at some point uh, we were being told that moi needs to record a statement on matters golden back and he either goes to report the statement at um Mutula uh, Kilonzo Mutula's office or the police are sent to his house so as the uh, Rift Valley leaders then 
I remember we issued a statement and, and we said, Moi is not going to record no statement nowhere. Yeah? Because you believed he had nothing to say? No, or... because we believed this is a statesman. He has done his term. Mm -hmm. He has handed over power in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. And the least that anybody would want to do to him was to harass him. That right? was that not subverting justice? Uh, I don't think say, so. Looking back, because we we no, I don't think so. Because I think it was reckless for anybody to try and uh, harass an old man, you know, uh, of 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 Moi's uh, age. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you needed investigations into Golden Bank, there were enough people, you know, PSS, ministers, people who had uh, uh, participated in, uh, in, in executing whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that uh, the going for Moi was a political uh, move. Mm -hmm. The place where now uh, a small problem developed between me and Moi was in uh, 2005. The trouble now is when we had this meeting in Eldamaravin, where I declared that I was going to run for president. That is the, 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 the stroke or whatever the they call it. The that broke the camel's Correct. back. That broke the camel's back. Because uh, from Kabarak, I, I thought it was a simple thing. From uh, Lamaravin. So we were about 15 members of parliament. And uh, so we, we, we wanted to pass by Kabarak to, because it was, it was customary whenever we are around Nakuru, we would pass by, have tea, say hello to Mze, have a chat with him. But this time around, we found the gates closed. In 2005? Because when immediately we left this ravine meeting, mm. so we were told Mzee said he doesn't want to see you guys, so we left. Then he issued a very scathing uh, statement against my uh, announcement, mm -hmm. um, castigating my candidature um, that it wasn't uh, serious, I was misleading the community, blah, blah, blah. I think that statement was carried by uh, all the newspapers mm -hmm. in the headline that time. So that is when things did not, because later uh, it became obvious that uh, he had a different succession plan uh, than, 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 than the one maybe I, I proposed. Mm. And you mean succession plan post Kibaki? No, no, no. I'm talking about community. Oh, com okay. Succession okay. plan. Okay, you know, okay. I see. Around, around the community. Because I remember subsequently when uh, he went out, he said, um, uh, Ruta cannot be the person, you know, you should choose from seasoned people mm -hmm. like Henry Kosge, like, uh, like uh, Nicholas Biwot and all these other people who are more senior than myself. Mm. They were older. But you know, then, I, my argument then, I remember making the argument that while I respect Kosge, while I respect Biwo, they are my elders, they are senior to me, mm. I didn't want to be a community leader. Those people can be community leaders. Mm. I wanted to be president of Kenya. And the president of Kenya does not uh, necessarily mean you have to be a leader of any community. Mm. So I said I respect Mzee's position that the community leader should be uh, in the region of Henry Koske, Biwot and others. That's fine and I respect. But what I am going for is a national seat, a Kenyan seat. Mm. I remember being people being sent, including all the way to my constituency that time, to try and, uh, you know, talk to people, you know, Ruta should not do this. But then I asked them, I want to know why Moi is against my candidate. Mm. Does he want to run? I am willing to step down. I am willing to step down my candidature and support him. Yeah? What is the problem? You know? And if he doesn't want me to run, 
whoever he wants to run, let him come, we compete. If he defeats me, we will, we, I, I will submit. Well and good. So that is where now things did not quite... And, and it seemingly degenerated to a point where about a year and a half ago or so, <laughs> you, I mean, I know you know the incident a lot more than me. Uh, you attempted to see him in Kabarak and there were many reports about what actually happened that day. We didn't have issues uh, with Moi as such. You know, so, so, after. so what then happened? So this incident was just an isolated incident there and I, and I would rather we don't discuss about it because it is, it is not an incident that uh, you can actually say it has anything to do with the old man himself. I think it has something to do with the handlers, which, which then uh, I do not want us to, to delve into. Yeah. That's what you're going to say on that matter? On that matter, I think we leave it there. I, 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 I have a lot of respect for uh, Mze Moi. The match he did for us mm -hmm. as young leaders then, the match he did for the country, yeah? I, I don't think we can begrudge him. He, he went out of his way. He did his best. He may have gotten things here and there wrong. Mm -hmm. He's a human being, yeah? He's not an angel. And, uh, but he did something for this country and we should appreciate, we should appreciate the positive it. things that Moy did. The yeah. unity of the country, holding the country together, mentoring many leaders. I, do, I cannot think possibly of any leader today. You know, I think 60, 70% of the leaders we have today in Kenya were mentored by Moi at one point or another. Oh, those who thought of him as a dictator because of that style, even how he dealt with the opposition, or those who are clamoring for an opposition. You know, Moi lived in a different era. You must judge Moi against the, the then, when he, when he was there. What, what was, then when Moi was in office, it was largely a single party mm -hmm. era across the continent. Mm -hmm. It is after the 90s that uh, there was agitation, not just in Kenya, across the continent for politics to be opened up, to be a, a proper multi-party uh, democracy. So if you were to meet the children of, of those who are in opposition then, who were detained, who suffered, who lost property, who possibly lost lives, what would you tell them as someone who walked, was a member of Kanu, and who can say he had some insights into Moi the man? What would you tell their children today? For your information, mm -hmm. by the time of 1997, uh, when we joined politics, Kenya had already changed. Kenya was already a very different place. There, it was already fully-fledged uh, multi-party uh, country. Our experience with Moi does not go as far as when we had detention camps. We read detention, detention uh, cells in books the way you and others are reading today. So I cannot give you quite a clear account of what happened those days. Of course it is unfortunate that uh, things happened in those days in the manner that it did. It was not right. It should not have happened. But that's part of our history. We can learn from it so that we don't ever, ever again go back there. As we wrap up this interview, you have talked extensively about your relationship with uh, late President Moy, but many speculate even as he's laid to rest next week about your interaction, your role in the program next week, and your relationship with uh, what, some would, what many would say is his most prominent son, Senator Gideon Moy. Moi brought up uh, his family. And his family includes his children, and I mean biological children. It also includes his political sons and daughters. And that is many of us. You count yourself as one of those. Absolutely. I, I think that is one man we, we owe a lot. We owe him respect. I'm just wondering for what he did, for the contribution he made, for being president for 24 years, 
He made huge contributions yeah. in education and in many other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do not think we should lace that with petty competition or, you know, small talk. So you I think Moi deserves the best. So you Moi don't... deserves a very decent send-off free of shenanigans. What role do you want to play in that send-off? There, there are many who read uh, possible isolation of the deputy president, whether before he <laughs> passed on or, or even now, Your Excellency. Uh, this isolation talk is petty and it is nonsensical. Yeah. Um, if you want to know my role, go read the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that's uh, what it is. And I will be happy to sit and watch and pay my respects to President Moi as he is given a state funeral. That would be my biggest desire, to be there, just to give him my respects and, uh, and, and not to position myself for anything. Yeah. And again, the question of your relationship with, with his son, uh, that is something you've, you've not answered quite directly. Could that be I think, a I think factor? Let us, I think let us, uh, we, we will have a discussion about our other relationships after we have sent off Mze. As I have told you, uh, Mze is a father figure. He has his family, which, which we must respect. And the rest of us are an extension of his political family. And we would want, with a lot of respect, there to be given a send off devoid of politics. When was the last time you saw him face to face? Can you recall? I think I saw him the last time when he came to Eldred during a function of the Catholic uh, bishop, then Corinne, uh, I think uh, 2016, 17, thereabout. Okay. Your Excellency, thank you for your time. Thank you, my friend. Asante, Asante, Asante. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.